Hey everybody, this is Matt Shu at Upright Health and today we are looking at the acetabular labrum and its role in hip joint stability. So oftentimes we get emails from people who are concerned because they've been told they have a labral tear, uh, whether or not they have uh, femoral acetabular impingement. Uh, they just have some sort of discomfort in their hip and uh, they have been told that a labral tear is responsible for their pain and is making their hip joint unstable and that the, the labral tear uh, needs to be dealt with um, in order to restore hip joint uh, stability and integrity. So the conventional understanding of labral tears is that if you have a tear in the labrum, which is this um, so, kind of soft-ish structure that sits uh, in the socket that forms your hip joint, so you have your socket and your ball, if you, have the, if you have a tear in the labrum, it is believed that that creates an unstable situation. Um, so you need to go in and sometimes they will remove part of the labrum. Um, sometimes they'll uh, reattach the labrum to, um, to the bone. So um, what this study that I'm holding looks at is the effect, the actual effect of a radial tear, so that's basically a tear that goes in this dire direction relative to the labrum, or a circumferential tear, which would go this way. So you have two different types of tears, the radial or circumferential, um, and this study basically used human cadavers um, with actual labrum, uh, labrums and uh, did some very precise measurements to determine what would happen when you had radial tears and circumferential tears, and they also looked at what happens when you perform uh, labrectomies where you start chopping bits of the labrum off um, and they have very clear um, numbers to support uh, support their conclusions. So uh, this was actually published in 2011 in the American Journal of Sports Medicine. Uh, I will provide a link. The title of this study is The Effect of Acetabular Labrum Tears on Hip Stability and Labral Strain in a Joint Compression Model. This was done at the Orthopedic Research Laboratories in the De Department of Orthopedic Surgery at University of Michigan Ann Arbor. Um, so what they looked at again was the effect of the labral tears and the labrectomies on stability of the hip joint. Um, to really to test the um, conventional theory, the, the widely accepted theory that the labral tears are going to um, obviously decrease hip joint stability. So from their results, they said that there was uh, no significant difference in stability ratio after circumferential tears three centimeters or less in size compared uh, with the intact label state. So the translation there is uh, you could have a, a circumferential tear going this way, uh, three centimeters or less, and it would have absolutely uh, no significant uh, change in your stability ratio. Strain in the anterior and superior uh, labrum was either unchanged or increased after circumferential labral tear. Um, so there's maybe a little bit of a difference. difference. Uh, there was no significant difference in stability ratio after a radial tear or a one centimeter partial labrectomy compared with an intact labrum. Um, they did find, however, that a two centimeter partial labrectomy significantly decreases the stability ratio. Um, so that is definitely something to take note. Um, the other very interesting thing that they found was that anterior and anterior superior labral strain actually decreases after a radial tear. So uh, what they found was basically that the idea that labral tears make your hip joint unstable uh, is um, not as clear cut as believed. Uh, so from their conclusions, they, they wanted to note, um, uh, I'm just gonna read you the quote here. Our study demonstrates the acetabular labrum continues to prevent femoral head dislocation as long as there's a critical amount of labrum remaining intact. Uh, the critical amount of labrum needed for normal label function likely depends on the position of the hip. Um, although this study does not account for the role of other soft tissues surrounding the hip, it does suggest that acetabular label preservation may be important to maintain native hip stability. So this study um, it's very interesting because it shows that in some ways leaving the labrum alone, even if there is a little tear, is actually um, 
a very good idea rather than going in and cutting um, any pieces off of it. Um, you know, uh, one other little highlight here is they said uh, a three centimeter partial lobectomy, when a three centimeter partial lobectomy is performed, um, the stability ratio in the hip significantly uh, decreases. So um, uh, it's, uh, let's see, they said this indicates that the acetabular labrum likely continues to resist femoral head dislocation despite its, de despite its detachment from the acetabular rim. So um, again, even if you have a slightly detached labrum is what they're talking about, um, cutting actually seems to greatly reduce the stability, or uh, let's not say greatly, but it does have a significant effect on the stability ratio if you then cut uh, pieces of the labrum away. So um, I will provide a link to this study. Um, it is a little bit hard to digest. Uh, it seems quite technical and they do go into a lot of different uh, ins and outs of their methodology, but it's definitely worth a read. Definitely food for thought when somebody um, is considering cutting pieces of your labrum away. Um, and also calls into question the idea, the underlying idea that uh, any kind of label tear is necessarily going to drastically affect your hip joint. So I hope this gives you some good ideas, um, start sparking some uh, thoughts that help you think about your body in a different way, and I hope that you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.